Hi, good morning and good evening to everyone. Welcome to Mainframe Tutorial. This is Kumar. So, in my today's video, I would like to tell you about the COBOL plus DB2 compilation process. So, we all know that DB2 COBOL plus DB2 compilation process is very, very important. And uh, I thought of uh, sharing my experience uh, and what are the various steps steps involved in this DB2 uh, compilation process? So let's go ahead and look into this. And it it also plays a very important uh, for the interview purpose. So what are the various steps we need to take here during this uh, in order to compile a COBOL or DB2 program? So I can say that there, there are basically five points which we need to determine. The first one is the pre-compilation, the next one is a compile, then third one is link edit, the package and the bind plan. So these are the very very important steps for a COBOL to COBOL plus DB2 program when there is a COBOL plus DB2 program. So so first we will be looking into the what is pre-compile exactly and what is compile, what is link edit, what happens in the package and what happens in the bind plan. So initially we will give our COBOL plus DB, DB2 program as an input to pre-compile. Uh, it will separate it will separate all the statements uh, whatever the queries we return in the, uh, the I mean it will identify the queries I um, mean the DB2 statement separately and loads into a DBRM and it creates separate copy books and it is uh, it it creates another source code for this and there are various steps involved so so I have drawn a chart for this so so this will be the COBOL plus DB2 program and it will go to the pre-compiler and this pre-compiler pre section it, uh, it expands all the copy books and uh, it replaces the statements I mean the DB2 statements with the source code and uh, the, with the call statements and it, it separates it so here we will get to get another uh, source code which has all the entirety code specific to the COBOL statements only and we here it creates a DBRM then it goes to bind then it goes to package then it plans so these plan and this the outbridge module are combined together then then your COBOL DB2 pre-compilation and the compilation is done. So, I I think you ha couldn't understand much more with this. So, I will give you a brief descri uh, brief description about each block, what happens exactly in pre-compiler, what is DBRM, what is bind, what is package, and what is plan, and when it goes to the compilation section, when this is getting combined. So. So the step one, as I said, there are five steps. We will discuss about the both all the five steps in this. The step one is the pre-compilation. Uh, the COBOL compiler doesn't know about SQL statement. With this reason, the COBOL DB2 program has to be undergo with the pre-compilation process. I hope you now you have understood why we need to go for pre-compilation. COBOL compilers will doesn't understand the SQL statement so that is the main reason we are going for a pre-compilation so this is the program we have IBM supply program that is DSN HPC it is the program used for pre-compilation so we need to understand what happens in pre-compilation right so let's see the background of pre-compilation so one the first point is expands all copy books declared in these uh, declared with include statements yes we will uh, send, hence we will write an include statements in the COBOL program which with the queries and everything but it uh, it expands all the copy groups declared with include statements then validates stable declaration used in DCLJ and copy book then next it will check the syntactical errors on SQL statements and also validates the fields based on table declaration from DCL gen copy book. At the same time it extracts all SQL statements into DBRM and replaces SQL statements with COBOL call statements to have a standard COBOL coding. 
so that the COBOL compiler can understand the code. So that's the reason it extracts all the SQL statements into a DBRM and replaces SQL statements with COBOL call statements in the call DSHLI using. Uh, so the COBOL code which is replaced with call statement is called a modified source. So when I come back to picture, so here all the SQL statements are loaded into and a DBRM and all the modified source that is which we have replaced the SQL statements with the call statements that is called as a modified source code. So we are here. So the next one is uh, generates it generates a time stamps for both modified source and DBRM. These are checked in run times. Yes, see, see why it generates the timestamps, you know. So here we are separating the COBOL object and we are creating a DBRM during the run time it checks the timestamps of both uh, the COBOL modified source object program and the DBRM modified so whenever it matches then only it can run the COBOL plus DB2 program so that's the reason this is very very important note pre-compilation can be executed even if DB2 is down so this is very very important so the pre-compilation can be executed even if DB2 is down. Sometimes the DB2 uh, system goes up and go, goes down. So the one thing you are here you need to notice is DB2 is a separate subsystem from the mainframe system. So where a multiple platforms can can retrieve the data from the subsystem system. So for example, as a mainframe developer, I am accessing the DB2 system with the help of COBOL programs. So in the same way, there might be a Java system or a .NET system or any other system which will have an access to this DB2 system. That's the reason I am calling it as a DB2 as a subsystem in the co in the mainframe environment. Okay. So the next step will be the compilation. It is same as a normal COBOL compilation. It takes modified source as an input and compiles it. So the same thing happening here. It takes a modified source program and compiles it and it creates the object program. So what is the utility or I mean sorry, what is the program? We call it as IGYCRCTL. This is the program used for a compilation. So the same thing happens. Cobalt, Cobalt plus GB2, pre-compiler, modified source, then object program. So output of this compilation is object module. So next step three is link edit. This takes the object module from compile step and also take sub program load modules and generate load module. So IEWL it is the program to link object module. So so as I said as in the above you have saw the diagram where it uh, we have a pre-compiled divides into DBRM and the modified source source. So at the end you need to link edit it you need to link both the object programs and the DBRMs combined together so IE IEWL is a utility or program which is used to link the object module okay so the next fourth important step in this DB2 COBOL plus DB2 compilation process is the bind DBRM which is extracted in the pre-compilation is not an executable right I hope you understand this so in the above as we have separated uh, the COBOL COBOL modified source and your DBRM the DBRM which is extracted in the pre-compilation is not an executable it has to undergo through bind process which makes statements executable so in order to make DBRM as an executable we need to go to the bind process so activities of bind process are the first step is check SQL statements with the DB2 catalog entries yes check authorization of the programmer on the SQL statements it will check the syntax errors of all SQL statement which are left by pre-compiler it creates a package which contains optimized access path finally it creates a package which contain optimized access path optimized is uh, a subcomponent or a sub palm of bind which will use statistics 
statistic as input generated by run strategy from the BTO catalog. So it's uh, we are what we are doing. It is checking various SQL statements. Uh, it is uh, checking for catalog entries and it is checking the syntax errors, SQL statements which are left of three compilers, and finally it is creating a package which contains the optimized access path. What is exactly an optimized access path? Optimized access path is a subcomponent or a sub palm of a bind which will use statistics. Statistics as input generated by runstat utility. We will do. We will like. Uh, I would like to also tell about what is statistics and why we are calling it as runstats and what is optimized and what is DB2 catalog. So we would do, we will. We need to know what is exactly this. So what is DB2 catalog? It is a DB2 subsystem object, object repository. It contains system defined tables like sys tables, sys columns, sys views, and sys indexes, and sys index spaces, and sys keys. So what do you mean by statistics? When I say statistics, it means number of columns, types of index, number of indexes, number of views, types of queries, and number of columns participating. So this is what about the DB2 catalog and uh, what is this uh, number of participating so I think to uh, to give a more clarification of the word the binding process I have drawn a chart where it clearly explains about the binding process so now we got a DBRM uh, with the help of IKJ FT utility uh, we, it goes to the bind step and uh, we have optimizer, we have statistics, we have run stats, and we have DB2 catalog. As I said, DB2 catalog is a DB2 uh, subsystem object. It's a DB2 subsystem object where uh, what these run stats will do is it extracts the information like statistics information, number of indexes, number of rows, and uh, it gives the statistics information uh, to the optimizer. Okay from here it will create a plan okay and about this plan there should be a package it there will be a package I missed it here so this package now first what will happen is in the bind step first it will create a package then it will create a plan so these plan are combined together into a load life which is a runtime supervisor and the application plan so in this way the pre-compilation or the db2 cobol plus db2 pre-compilation goes on so to give about the syntaxes and uh, how the package and the plan and how do we run so these are the various uh, these are the parameters which we pass in order to create a package that is dsn system db2 table i mean the, the system name the package name and the program name here the uh, we, uh, we have various parameter other parameters like isolation validate explain and the same way plan we have db2 table name. i mean the system name and the plan name and uh, the package list whatever you have given here you have to map it here and the pro and the account and the isolation validate and explain the so finally hey here you will giving your program name and the prop plan name in order to run your COBOL plus db2 program right I hope you all have enjoyed this video and this would be very 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 useful for the beginners or whoever is uh, attending for an, any interview thank you for watching this video have a great and wonderful day